Good evening, this is Dr. Bill White again with the American Orthodontic Society and I've got a, a real interesting case to go over with you today. It's an adult. It's a class 2 division 1 with a short lower jaw. The lower jaw is way back. I'll show you in a little bit. And we're going to open or level the bite up where she can bring it forward. She's trying to bring it out on her own there, but can't get it out all the way. So we're going to level it and bring it the rest of the way. We'll have to make a retainer with a ramp on it, which we did, uh, and she'd have to use that for years after we brought her jaw forward. Now when you bring the jaw out, you don't make it grow, even if you're doing it on a kid, you know. And that's the kids growing themselves. The condyle actually moves back and that moves the jaw forward in this gonial angle right down here on your jaw. It straightens out. In other words, if you held your elbow like this and you moved your jaw forward, this, this portion of the jaw would actually straighten out. I can't see it over this picture right here, but it that's where you get the length. And if you keep it that way, it'll get to where that's the place it'll go to all the time and it'll stay there. But it, if you go back and forth, <coughs> it, it will never get to where it stays in that position. Well, let's get started here and I'll try to uh, not kill too much time here uh, working on this case. I've got to get it going. Now here, I've got several uh, models uh, here. Her lower jaws are crowded up. We've got crowded all around these teeth down here. And so these teeth are fitting up into the, behind the upper teeth, somewhere about like uh, this. Uh, they'll be back in the back. Now that way I'll show you on this model in just, just a second. The upper jaw is kind of narrowed and, and lying back like this. I'd rather see it pulled out further where you get more tooth structure showing up in the upper part of the jaw. We round that out uh, anyway. It brings it back to some extent. <coughs> Excuse me. Now on the uh, side view, this is the right side view. Actually, this molar back here should be up here about like that in other words this jaw needs to move that much further to the front to fit fit properly and have these teeth fit together i want to show you a, a view looking in here from the bottom side and you look at that and you wonder how on earth i mean she's got her lower front teeth that's where she goes when she chews or swallows or pulls her jaw back to this point. I mean, this distance from here to here looks like it's about 10 or 12 millimeters. Uh, it's, and she doesn't hold it there. She usually brings it out here somewhere like that. In fact, the pictures you'll see in a minute. She's trying to get it further forward in uh, this position. Now, we look at it from the side. Again, this mold right here should be out uh, over in this part here. And so let's get on with it. When you look inside here, this is a bad picture, but anyway, the lower teeth are sitting up in the roof of the mouth like that. <coughs> now, if I'm not mistaken, this lady is 54 years old. And uh, this was in 07, 5, 17 of 07, when we started it. Now this is a picture I want you to remember. I mean, when she closes her teeth up like that, this jaw is back here. And you really would like to see this jaw out here somewhere. So we're hoping to advance this mandible that far. Now, the mandible is not going to grow. I want you to know I'm not telling you it's going to grow. But where the 
mandible grows in here and you have a condyle up here, the neck of the condyle will move back and the condyle will be further back here and that pushes the jaw further. This gonial angle in the mandible right here will get bigger. In other words, it'll flatten out and as it flattens it out, it pushes the jaw forward and then you get the person to stay that way long enough, this thing will stay there. But if they go back and forth, it won't, it won't stay there. You can push it out there, just like on kids, before they get their permanent teeth, these appliances that advance the mandible just don't work good because the baby teeth are flat. Once they get their permanent teeth, and they've got the permanent teeth have some pretty good uh, interdigitation up here, and so when the, their upper tooth fits down in here, I mean, that pulls the jaw to that position. When they get their permanent teeth, these herpes appliances and things tend to work much, much better and hold the jaw out there while the young person grows to it. Now, some young men, you want to watch out because they'll grow in past where you wanted them to go. Uh, it, it doesn't really work that much. Now, we'll go here, looking straight on, <coughs> pardon me, looking straight on at her, you just don't notice the jaw being back that far. But if you go back, let's see, and you see that this jaw is almost, oh, it's a, looks like a quarter inch back like that or several millimeters back and now you can visualize what she's going to look like with her lips out in that fashion there so here looking straight on it you don't notice that but now when she smiles you see the lower teeth are back there forward but part of the way back now that's the I think we've got two or three of these smiling shots I don't have to show. Now this is where she brings her jaw out. In other words, she's pushing the jaw out there to try to eat, but she doesn't fit together back here. So when she chews, the jaw will go back. And when you swallow it, it goes into that um, distal position that it has there. So you want to get used to it and just have the jaws change the gonial angle and move the condyle back and then the jaw looks like it grew but it didn't grow. Now we we'll look at these pitch pictures you see the crowding and everything. So here it is 614 of 07 and we're working on our teeth. Now <coughs> for those of you who are just thumbing through this, uh, you can see we just took a flexible wire and went around and went back in and got that tube. I don't use these brackets all the time. It's just some of the time. Uh, we've got a lip buffer in here that's working off of a tube back here on the side. And we got elastics and we ought to hold it in there and everything. And the lip buffer is not touching the tissue back here in the back. So when the person with this lip bumper swallows, they'll do like that. They get a habit of doing that. And that pulls these teeth back. Well, when that, they back this up with their lip muscles here, or real stout, they back the lip bumper up, it puts this same force back on these teeth back here, holds them back, and so we're gonna get an opening of space in here. This will go back and this will come forward in here because the lips will just kind of move up on that. As they get closer, you open, open this U a little bit and that keeps this pad out away from the tissue. You want the pad to be just a, a couple of millimeters of space between the pad on the lip bumper and the tissue down here on the lip bumper. So that's something you need to watch out when you start using a lip bump. It is a marvelous 
Let's see, uh, kind of a tool that you use in orthodontics now. And I'm going to jump forward here in a minute. Now, you just can't get pictures on everybody. Every time they come in, you will come in at a busy, busy time, and you can't get in there and take the pictures. But anyway, when she advances her mandible, we put a bite plate up here, which puts a lot of strain on the joint back here, because when you bite down up here, it puts more force back here on the, the joint. And you've got a gap in between here. Sometimes you have to put a composite bond or something in the middle of this, let all the teeth erupt around it, and then take it out and they bite on the teeth and then let the block come together. So if you've got somebody with a tender temple mandibular joint, that's giving them trouble so that you can't put the jaw out here and put a pad on it, but uh, nothing but hits here and hits on the two joints. And if the joints are sore to start with, you just, you can't go there at all. So you have to put something in between and then that carries the load up and down in the bone. And now the teeth on either side will erupt together. These will go down, these will go up when they get together. Then you take your pad out and let that come to. And that holds the force in this area of the bone and keeps it off of the joint. Now these are uh, important things. You have to kind of get used to uh, thinking of that. Okay, here we are. She's got a bite plate up above. So here, this is the upper jaw now, sitting in here like that. You see this is a palate. And we've got this acrylic plate up here that she bites against. And I'll go back to that picture. So when this jaw closes, these touch and behind here. And nothing touches back except the jaw joint back here. And you hold that as you expand these teeth. And put a lot of expansion in this arch wire. And the teeth are being pushed from the back by the tongue. And they'll separate and move down. Then you've got to put a something on them and push down on the teeth. We didn't use a intruding arch here that we normally would come down and come up and we can put one of those on. I don't personally remember putting the intruding arch. It, it came, it went down on its own. And that's the pad at the top of the arch. Now this is the lower teeth. Now we're going to expand these teeth out like that and there'll be room for them. And then she can, when we get them down, she can bring her jaw all the way, all the way to the front. And we'll jump forward here. I didn't get pictures of all of this, but this is 07 and 16. So she's out just about to that point now. Uh, it's a lot further forward, but this has got to level out in here. So, after a few more tre treatment months and everything, the, these teeth came down, and these went up a little bit, and these came together back in, in here, and they came together in a class one relation. All right, this is that plate, the right plate up above, and here the lower teeth now have room enough as we pull them in position by expanding the lower jaw we expanded the upper jaw too and by the way these are adults and you can expand their jaw and the whole bone structure that holds the teeth expands with you and the basal bone that supports the alveolar bone over a period of time moves out where it's more efficient in that area it it is there to support that alveolar bone and the alveolar bone moves with the teeth, and the whole thing gets bigger in there over a period of time. But it doesn't happen overnight now. Now this is uh, this is a long time now. This is that says five or twelve. I can't believe that. 
But no, apparently this is several years later. We come back and I guide the lady in and you see she's laying in now. And these teeth are fitting together like this. Now, you are able to take somebody with a jaw that's a half inch, looks like back like that, and you can go in and bring it out here, and we increase the vertical dimension of this by allowing these to come together. Whenever they came together, this got more down here. And when you look at this, her face needed to be a little bit more of the vertical element. So there's the upper jaw, and we've got the retainer in it. It has a little bite plate in here. You can see the rim of it up here. That keeps her biting in that forward position there. And here's another shot of it. The midline zone. There's another view. Then from the side, the teeth will, if you leave them alone long enough, they'll erupt into each other and they wear facets come in there. And now this molar is out here, where before it was back here. So the jaw has moved out, but it hasn't grown bigger. The colonial angle in here may have been like this, now it may be like that. And the head of the condyle, which is up here on the thing, it may have moved back so that the condyle is, the neck of it changes, and that brings the jaw forward. But you have to stick with it, and you can get the jaw to go out there. There is a world of this adult orthodontics out there that is not going, not being treated. In fact, in, in many orthodontic classes, <coughs> excuse me, they don't even treat it. They won't, they won't start to treat it. But it, get in there and teach people around you how to do it. It's the most gratifying thing uh, that I know of, is being able to change the face that much. I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you'll stick with our group and subscribe if you haven't. Thank you, and I will say good night and go. Bye-bye.